What's up YouTube? Tim Truex here from Connection Reptiles and today I'm going to bring you a comparison video of the sizes of my one-year-old and three-year-old boa constrictor. This is my 14-month-old sun glow boa. She's possible arabesque, which I don't see. I got it for Alfred Genetics. And um, Kabush Pastel, which is a line bread characteristic. I think it's the blushing on the sides. She is actually 14 months old. Um, she's about, she's like three feet. I don't know what she weighs. The sun glow boa is a combination of hypo and albinism. She is one copy of hypo, which is uh, incomplete dominant. And she is two copies of albinism, which makes her albino. When I got her, I was feeding her um, mice because I had uh, rats though, not a lot of mice, that I actually fed her every five days for like three weeks just to get her big enough to start taking like uh, wiener rats. And uh, once I got her on that, I just kept her on that, but she grew really, really fast, maybe from the extra food for those few weeks. And she went to small rats pretty quickly and she's still on small rats. I have no plans of moving her up anytime soon, but uh, she's beautiful, I don't know if you can see her eyes. She's, she's actually squeezing the crap out of me right now. I don't know why. She's very tame. She's a good girl. I like to take her out. She's really pretty. My other, my larger boa isn't that pretty. And they kind of contrast each other well. And this is my three-year-old boa. She just turned three on July 7th, and I think it's the 17th right now. Uh, she is a ghost boa. She's in her dark phase. She gets lighter. She's hypo. She's anatheristic. And she's jungle. So... Basically what that means is the hypo reduces black pattern, the anatheristic uh, takes away the red, and it leaves with a pretty drab looking boa. When I got her, I wanted to get a boa, and I took my wife with me to the Reptile Expo, and uh, the breeder took her out and was like, oh yeah, she's nice, and boas are nice, see, look, and my wife was like, okay, I want that one. I'm like, whoa, they're all nice like that, don't pick this one, but that was it. She had in her head that this particular boa is nice, so we got this boa. She's, uh, she eats large rats. I feed her like every other week. She ate a large rat uh, two days ago, three days ago. She's friendly too. I think most bulls are friendly. I actually prefer boas over bull pythons because of uh, their feeding response. It's the, in, the instantly and they eat all the time. Where the bull pythons are just a pain in the, in the, in the balls. Her tail is not as pretty as the other one, but it's kind of cool anyway. When she was younger, it was really pretty. It had a nice like black outline around every little circle. As you can see, she's active, slow moving, but yet still active. She's a lot more fun to hold than your, your uh, fast moving snakes, which can be exhausting. These are actually quite calming. I almost consider it therapeutic. I plan on doing an update video on her in a year or two. And the other one, when she was a year old, she was 30 inches and she was skinny. When I first got her, I was feeding her hopper mice and she regurgitated the first time and it freaked me out and I kept her on hopper mice for a long time. And I think that's why she was so thin. I fed her every week, but I just uh, fed her hopper mice until she was like a year old. And then when I switched to large mice, it was a rapid increase. It was like large mice, um, rat pups, and then quickly on to weaned, and then to smalls. You know, it didn't take long once I started increasing the food size. She's probably like five feet. I would say she's about five feet. I don't know what she weighs. She's like, it's too hard for me to uh, judge snake's weight. And I can't weigh her because she doesn't stay in any of the bowls or anything like that. My other boa, when she was the same age, about a year old, she was definitely much thicker, about six inches longer, weighed way more than her. If I had to predict, uh, I think the sun glow is going to be a bigger boa. But even at, at this size, five feet, you know, people think five foot snake is huge. But she's really, it's really not that big. She's not a big snake. Like, she's not tiring me out. I could do this all day, this is nothing. Kids can hold her, you know, this isn't a big deal. Also, what I like about the boa constrictors too is they're not as head shy as the ball pythons. Ball pythons do not like to have their head touched where the, the boas don't seem to care much, especially with, not even like, I would say irregular handling. They're still, I don't hold her all the time. I can go weeks without holding her. I haven't held her in like two weeks and you can see she doesn't, she doesn't care. I think I'm, as a bonus, I'm going to show my Dumeril's boa who is uh, about a year old, almost a year. And the Dumeril's was probably thicker than 
she was at the same age, but uh, about the same length, not very long. This is my Dumeril's boa. I don't have a name for her. I don't have a name for my Sun Glow. My larger boa's name is Phoebes. This is probably the nicest snake I own. She probably has the best disposition out of all my snakes. As you can see, she's like, I would say 30 inches maybe. She's not three feet, that's for sure. She's not skinny, but she's not as thick as the Sun Glow is. And she's actually thicker than Phoebes was when she was the same age. I feed her one live mouse a week. I actually can't get her to eat frozen thawed very often. I can get her to eat quail. I, uh, I screwed up and ordered too large of quail this time. So I'm gonna have to go to an expo or something. I live in New York and the White Plains Expo is still not open because of COVID. So, so that makes it more difficult for me to get frozen food. I order in bulk off like Rodent Pro or something like that, but I like to pick up certain things at expos when I need them instead of always having to buy in bulk. I feel like once I get her onto rats, then she might take off a little bit more in size, but I'm not stressing it. I'm not pushing it. I'm just enjoying her. When somebody comes over and they want to hold an animal that's like not a ball python that uh, I know is just about as tame as tame can be, it's this. And it's funny because when people see her, a lot of times they expect her head at any second to swing around and nail you, but it's like it's not going to happen. It's, it's never going to happen. It's it's almost like a person when you see them, the videos of them, like somebody puts a beer dragon on their back and they scream or uh, they see a, a puppy and then they freak out. Like the same is, applies to snakes. Like you can see a snake and be like, man, this thing is never gonna bite you. But yet you uh, might be terrified of it. And you think any second that head is gonna nail you. And it's, just, it's not gonna happen. All right, everybody, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like always, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and stuff like that. If you have any questions, just please leave me a comment. I, I love to answer comments. I read every comment you guys leave me. I appreciate everything. And uh, thank you for watching.